If you're like me, you love Windows, but when it comes to getting some real serious work done, you turn to your Mac. In this micro nugget, let's take a look at some tips that will keep your Mac running nice and speedy. First things first, look at my desktop. My desktop is absolutely clean. I'll notice a lot of people actually saving things to their desktop, and the more cluttered your desktop is on the Mac, the more that's going to slow you down, believe it or not. Yeah, you know, things like thumbnails and other things have to be rendered when you start up, so the more clutter on that desktop, the slightly slower speeds you're going to experience. Something else you should do occasionally with your Mac, I know you might find this hard to believe, is go ahead and restart it. I know that we are so used to the efficiency of our portable Macs. So I'm talking about like the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air. You like to just close it. Yeah, you hardly ever actually shut it down because the Mac, the Mac is so efficient at going to sleep, right? Well, please occasionally restart your Mac. I probably restart about once a week just to keep things fresh and tidy as far as memory utilization and things like that go. Another thing to watch out for is how much stuff you've got at startup. One indication is you can see these icons up here on my title bar, and those, of course, are indicating things that are starting when my machine does. This same occurrence happens in the Windows environment where we can have way too many startup items. To handle this, go into your preferences, go to users and groups, kind of a weird area to find this, and there's the login items section. So notice you can check and uncheck things that you want starting with your particular system. I'm fine with the iTunes helper. In fact, I want caffeine starting. That's great. Dropbox, that's great. Uh, and now I realize, wait a minute, as far as the Nike Plus Connect helper, I got rid of my Nike Fuel Band long ago, so I don't want that starting. As a matter of fact, I want to go ahead and I want to remove that from this list. And this actually leads us to our next tip. I want to go ahead and uninstall that unused application. For uninstalling, there's nothing really built into the Mac for that, surprisingly. So I go ahead and use the utility called App Cleaner. You launch App Cleaner, and then you just drag the app that you want to uninstall into it. So I'll go to Applications. I will find that Nike Fuel Band app. Where is it? It is right here. And I will drag that into App Cleaner. It will list absolutely everything associated with that application and allow you to just one click delete it. In that case, by the way, there wasn't a lot associated with it, but you get the idea. It will gather up all the log files, all the preferences files associated with that particular application. Speaking of deleting things, make sure you keep your system nice and tidy. Make sure you have plenty of free space because that's going to keep things speedy. The Mac will indeed write to your drive utilizing it like RAM, just like a Windows machine will. So you want to make sure you have plenty of space for that to occur. To check your space, it's easy. We'll just go to Go, for instance, and you can go to your computer view, and then you'll see your hard drive. You can right-click it and choose Get Info, and that's going to tell us how we are utilizing our disk. This is especially imperative these days because most of us are using solid state drives on our Macs for the incredible performance that we're going to get, but those tend to be smaller disks. Here you can see I have a 400 capacity solid state drive, 400 gig, and I have 210 of that available. So I'm doing pretty good, and you can see in my documents how tidy I keep things here. Not a lot going on. Now, I will say, in all fairness, that I'm using Dropbox for all of my storage mainly, so I do have I am taking up space with the Dropbox documents, but I go through and periodically tidy up my Dropbox as well. So make sure you get plenty of free space on your hard disk. Something else to be considering is fragmentation. There's this rumor that fragmentation does not occur on the Mac, and that is indeed a rumor that's not correct. Notice I have on my system, I purchased iDefrag. Where is it? There it is. 
iDefrag is my preferred defragmenter for my Macintosh hard disk. True, you don't have to do this as much as you would in a Windows environment, but this nice utility allows you to go in and do a variety of defragmentations, including a full defrag. And in order to do that, you would boot from the recovery particular mechanism on the Mac. So you would reboot in a particular you know, maintenance mode, if you will, and you would perform a full defrag on your Mac hard disk. Uh, a lot of times we just do the quick online will suffice. Notice the red here is fragmentation that exists on my disk. So I'm probably due to run through this. I'll do I defrag about every six months. You wouldn't want to do this often, often, often on a solid state drive because it could actually reduce the life of your solid state drive. So don't be doing this daily or anything like that. That is not necessary on the Mac and you could shorten that solid state drive's life. Something else that we should do to keep things tidy, keep things optimized, keep things running well, is go and do our disk utility checks. You have built into your Mac the disk utility utility, and you can go to your Macintosh hard drive and you should verify and then repair your disk permissions if necessary, and then verify and repair your disk if necessary. Please note, you verify first and it'll tell you if there's problems and then you repair. So this is something else that we should do in order to keep ourselves running as optimal as possible. Something else that we should do is really invest in the big whopping price tag of some type of log cleaning utility. I use Onyx and it's got a great price tag. It's free. So go up and grab Onyx. And what you do with this is you clean up your caches and other places that can get really cluttered and overall harm the you know, available disk space that you have on your Mac. So Onyx features this cleaning utility here. Notice caches for the system that can be clean, user information that can be cleaned, internet, fonts, logs, miscellaneous stuff, and then of course, permanently deleting the trash on your system. So Onyx, great free tool for cleaning up those particular locations on your system. And there's some other optimizations it can do for you as well. Another tool I want to point out, if you're really having performance problems and you suspect it might be maybe an application that is misbehaving on your system, go ahead and launch the activity monitor. It's not under preferences. <laughs> it is indeed under your utilities and you can see it here, the activity monitor. This is really, really cool and will allow you to see what's hogging CPU, what's hogging memory, what's hogging energy on your system. This is great if we want to try and get the most out of our battery life. We could literally stop things that are utilizing the battery heavily. We can see what's utilizing the local disk and what is communicating the most over the network. Great stuff. Another thing that you want to consider is upgrading your operating system. So if we go in and we say about this Mac, we see that I'm on version 10.9.4. That's of course the Mavericks operating system. And that had optimizations for my MacBook Pro. I mean, it was designed to speed up my MacBook Pro it was one of the reasons this particular version was released. So if you qualify for the upgrade, if the upgrade will work on your hardware, when, uh, I almost said when Cisco, no, it's not Cisco, it's Apple. When Apple releases a new operating system, you'll really want to consider it because typically it does have performance enhancements that you want to grab. The next version of the operating system at the time of this recording is Yosemite. And sure enough, Yosemite will feature some performance enhancements for my Mac. So I can't wait for that free upgrade to come out so I can move to it. Something else obviously is RAM on your system. Now I'm on a Retina MacBook Pro. So when I ran up to crucial.com and I ran the memory scanner at crucial.com, it gives me the bad news. Sorry, Charlie, I can't do a memory upgrade on my MacBook Pro. That is not possible because 
user upgrades are not possible. So a lot of these latest Mac versions, like the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pros, you have to select the amount of RAM that you want when you purchase it because you can't upgrade it later. I would therefore strongly encourage you to max out your RAM when you are purchasing these new devices. If you're purchasing something like an iMac, and that version of the iMac can be upgraded by you later on, then by all means, do that. Feel free. You'll probably save a lot of money on the RAM as opposed to having Apple do it. But some of these later devices, be sure to check, you might not be able to upgrade the RAM yourself. The final thing I want to mention, we kind of alluded to it here, is SSDs, solid state drives. You'll definitely want to consider taking your old hard drive and replacing it with a solid state drive if you don't already have one. This will give you great performance gains, and this is something that could be done on really any Mac. I can't think of any Mac where we couldn't take an old mechanical drive and replace it with a solid state drive if, again, we don't already have a solid state drive. One last thing, let's head over to apple.com. I just thought of something I wanna show you. One of the things that Apple does is they're starting to have what are called fusion or hybrid drives. I think they specifically call theirs a fusion drive. Let's look. So I'm shopping for my Mac and I want one of these big, beautiful iMacs. Now I want the best of both worlds. I want great performance, but I also want a hard drive that's going to be huge. So they offer that now. It's called a fusion drive. See it here? Look at these options. This iMac comes with a mechanical drive, a one terabyte serial ATA mechanical hard drive that spins at 5,400 revolutions per minute. If I want, I could go to a 256 gig flash SSD drive. I got to add $200 for that. And notice that's going to be the fastest drive I can have but it's relatively small storage space, 256 gig. So notice the one terabyte fusion drive is a nice middle ground here. The terabyte fusion drive utilizes a mechanical hard disk drive and it utilizes a solid state drive. What it will do, let me grab my pen, it will go ahead and take its solid state drive portion and then behind that is the mechanical disc platter. So here's our mechanical disc portion. And it will cleverly observe how you're using the information on the mechanical disc. And it will cache on the solid state drive portion that information that you access all the time. So the stuff you're accessing all the time is going to be coming to you in a very speedy fashion from the solid state disk portion of the fusion drive. The stuff you're not using all the time will stay parked permanently on the mechanical disk. So pretty clever technology. We can get increased performance of solid state, but we can get the size that we want of the mechanical disk drive all in one package. By the way, the larger the solid state drive, the better the performance. So if we wanted the fastest hard disk drive to put in this machine that Apple could sell us, you would actually want to bump up to the 512 gig. Not only is it larger, but it will also be a bit faster typically. It's interesting. It doesn't make logical sense. You'd think the larger the solid state drive, the slower it might be, but it's actually the opposite. So, I sure hope this micro nugget has been informative for you. We took a look at ways in which you can use utilities and practices to keep your Mac running really speedy. Again, I hope this micro nugget's been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.